Hi, today I'm going to do a film about all of the SOS products and things that I carry in my kit. Because most of my kit is full of glamorising things and glamorous things that beautify, like lipsticks and, you know, lip glosses and things for covering and concealing and beautifying and prettifying. But um, there's often situations, you know, I work with lots of models and actresses and they are real people and also they travel a lot so they can be irritated skin, allergies, all sorts of things. And um, I really enjoy actually looking for products that really work and can act quite quickly for all of these various things that can happen. So I'm going to start with unwanted facial hair. Now, if the hair is quite downy and not too thick, then I'll always prefer to bleach it, to lighten it. Because if it's just dark, but it's quite thin in texture, then it will almost disappear once it's bleached. Um, and it also depends on the kind of light and things that we're working with that day. I like things like Jolin, which has been around for a million years. Um, I've used it my whole career. And also generic brands like the Boots one is really good. And most kind of pharmacies sell sort of generic sort of versions of this. And um, they're great because they are quite light, uh, quite um, low levels of hydrogen peroxide and ammonia in there. So they're quite good for more sensitive facial skin. You do have to check, however, I would never, for example, use them on somebody that never had it done before, because if they were allergic to it, it would I would end up in a much worse situation. So if I'm working with someone for a few days and I can do a patch test, otherwise, most models actually are used to it because they have their eyebrows bleached all the time. And likewise, you know, if someone says, oh yeah, I've do that all the time, I've had it done before, I'm absolutely fine with it, then I'll go ahead. If it's very, very thick, sometimes when you bleach the hair, actually it catches the light more because it's so light and in a way it draws attention to it more. And in that case, if it is very dark and um, very thick, and I, I think that by the time I've bleached it, actually it's gonna show up even worse, then I'll use a hot wax. And this is something that I would, it depends how much time we've got. This is the Bliss one that I like. And this is great because it's very, very quick. It comes in a little plastic cup. You can microwave it or you can put it into a hot thing of water in, in a studio if you need to. This will depend on how much time I've got because you do go a little bit red afterwards. So if there's plenty of time, I will do it and put cold compresses on after. There is an oil that you can use after, but I prefer to put really cold compresses on because it takes the redness right down. And also I'll check if they've ever waxed, used hot wax before. And if they haven't, then I wouldn't risk it. But if it's somebody that I've worked with before, I know I could, I've done it on them before, um, or I've been able to have time to test it out and make sure they're not allergic to it, then um, that would be my preferred way of doing a little bit of facial waxing. Um, and I find that that is great because it's a hot wax, it never sticks to the skin, it's just my favourite brand, it's it's very, it, it's never, I've never touched wood, had any problems with it. So the next category would be the really irritated, dry skins that I get to fuss over on a daily basis um for those some of the products that i like are firstly the rose day cream by dr hauschka and this is really 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 greasy so unless you have got very very dry irritated skin you will you will turn into a total oil slick they do actually make a lighter version but i like this one for the dry skin um, and this has avocado and rose in, and it's really nice just for taking down the irritation and really moisturizing. It just really, it's like a drink for really, really dry skin. And um, I've used that for years and I really, really like it. The other product that I think is great is a Cetaplast product by La Roche-Posay. And I've used another one of theirs in some of my other films, the, the, the more serum-y one. And this is the balm, the B5 balm. And the key ingredient is vitamin b5 so it is very good as an anti-irritant and just really reducing that irritation you can use this balm on body on face on lips on hands um you can put a thick layer on if i've got time i can put a thick layer on someone and just leave them to kind of soak for a while before i do their makeup just to kind of help to really take down any irritation whether it be from eczema type skin or somebody that's had an allergy or somebody that's been on holiday and got too much sun and they turn up for a job and the skin is just parched and feels like it's been really really irritated that is really good the other two that i'll mention for body but i don't have them at the moment because what often happens on jobs is that i'll use these products on someone and they'll be really good 
And then I'll say, just take them, have it. Because I know that models and celebrities are traveling all the time and I can easily get another one. So um, I just feel like I should give them to them. So the two body products that I like are Lipicar, which again is by La Roche-Posay. And that's a really intense body lotion for itchy, irritated, dry, dry skin. It's actually mentioned in my French pharmacy film already, if you want to check that out. And... Another great one by is by Aven, and it's called Acarat. I think it's called Acarat. Yeah, Acarat 10 body cream. And that is for a, a psoriasis body skin, and that is fantastic as well. So continuing on with really irritated skin, I'm going to move to Aven. And this is their skin recovery cream. And Aven is a great brand for SOS because the whole of the brand is really dedicated to sensitivity. So whether it's oiliness and spots or whatever all the different concerns within sensitive skin and it's paraben free and all of their formulations are very much with a sensitive skin in mind and the skin recovery cream is just great for anyone that has had a, a flare up or a kind of reaction to a product or is generally just very very sensitive or has had maybe a chemical peel or some kind of procedure on their face so they need that kind of calming quality but again with sensitivity in mind um sticking with a ven but moving on to more redness now so when people turn up and they've got a lot of redness in their skin the first thing i'm going to mention is the anti rougeur and this is the one for normal to combination skin this is the emulsion but they also have a cream for more of a normal to dry skin and both of those products are great if you have general redness in your skin whether it's because of sensitivity to something that's happened or generally you have redness in your skin they both have SPF 20, so it's not great for flash photography. So I, for example, wouldn't use that before a red carpet. But um, it's good if you're outdoors because obviously if you have rosacea or some kind of irritated skin, you don't want to get sun, UV rays will just make it worse. So I find that a really good one for calming the skin. And they both contain green pigments, but they're not so green that you actually look green. It's very, very micro fine green and um, they really just work on the the circulation of the skin and really calming and soothing that redness another great one by Aven, which i've been looking for but i don't have and i just remember that i gave it to somebody last week on a job a model who had re a lot of redness in her skin and this is the anti-rouge relief for concentrate and it's for chronic redness it comes in a kind of slimmer tube than the other ones and it's more for localized redness. So if you have that really, you know, rosacea skin or irritated skin where you have like blocks of redness, normally they're on the cheeks and nose, maybe a bit on the forehead. But rather than sort of gentle redness all over, you have real blocks of quite intense areas of redness. And that one doesn't contain SPF, which is why I like to have it in my kit because it's quite good to use on anyone who's going to be in flash photography and um, you literally just use it on the areas and it really is a great anti-inflammatory and helps to reduce that that appearance of the chronic redness so next for redness and this is the skin cuticles redness neutralizer which contains thing called the neuromed complex which is basically the brand's own name for it so it's not an independent thing and it's essentially a whole string of anti-inflammatory peptides which are amino acids that help to suppress the sort of blood supply so it does help to reduce the redness quite quickly and I've had quite a lot of success personally with the um, some of the serums in the SkinCeutical range so when I saw this I thought it would be worth trying and it's actually become a really integral part of my kit because it's really greasy as well so if somebody has redness that I want to take down very quickly and they also have very dry skin I can kind of use that one product to really moisturize them and really kind of help to reduce the redness but it's definitely not for somebody with normal or combination skin it's definitely more for a very dry skin so last in the redness category and this is medic 8 red alert serum this is quite new into my kit I kind of got there by accident um i had read about it and i actually had some of it what i was interested in is that it contains something called tepranone which is a molecule that was used to treat gastric ulcers and it was noted that it had a dramatic effect on anti-redness, on, on redness. It really reduced redness very quickly in gastric ulcers. 
And it started to be tested for cosmetic use and it's recently become approved for cosmetic use. So I kind of had it and I wasn't really sure to test it out. But um, I never ever have allergic reactions, but I did have one about a month ago to a Korean product that I used. And I realized I think I shouldn't have used it overnight quite frankly, because all of the instructions were in Korean and I just presumed it was an overnight product and used it overnight and had the most shocking bright red face the next day. And um, I thought, well, I've got this and I'm going to try it. Thank God it worked because if it hadn't have done and if I'd been allergic to this as well, I would have been in a right state. But anyway, I put a layer of this all over my face before I went to bed and I was bright, bright red. And when I woke up the next morning, every trace was gone. So, um... The proof is in the pudding. I've now put it in the kit, which not many things go into the kit. They have to be proved. And I think it's something that I would use on anyone that has an allergic reaction, which is like a flare up very, very quickly. Lots of the um, research I've read on this product say that it does sort of inhibit the the pro-inflammatory um, stimuli to the skin so I think it just kind of halts that crazy reaction that sometimes you get and um, it worked on me I'm not really into like too much science sometimes it all gets too much but it did work on me so it's in the kit now so next on to lip balms and I always look for lip balms that contain emollients as well as humectant so things that moisturize as well as hold moisture my three favorites are creme de la mer which I've used since it launched. I absolutely love this product. It does cost a lot of money. It contains a protein from the Arctic. There's a whole story about it as there is with creme de la mer products, which I don't buy into marketing, but I do really, really like this product. I love to really slather it on and um, before I start the makeup. So by the time I get to the lips, the lips are really soft. The other one that I swear by is a very old cult product, and you've seen me use it before, is the um, 8 Hour Cream by Elizabeth Arden. I like the unscented version better. This is petroleum and vitamin E, and it's, again, it's just a great general product for raggedy cuticles, nails, lips, put it through the brows, cuts and grazes, all round great SOS product. And finally, one that I like is the Nivea, and this is just their classic HydraCare lip balm. It's just very, very emollient again, and really gives moisture to the skin, because you know the way some kind of feel like they hold moisture, but then they just make your skin, your lips feel drier. I don't find that with any of those three. So onto lifeless dehydrated skin, and I love cloth masks for this. Sometimes, you know, people, they haven't got dry skin, they haven't got particularly oily skin, but they just look a bit grey, and it's usually due to flying. And then I'll put a cloth mask on, the SK2 one I love. It contains something called Patera, which um, was discovered by monks making um, sake, and it's a yeast extract. It's, it's derivative of yeast from the, the, the rice that they use for the sake, and they noticed that all their hands were very youthful looking. So the whole of that brand is actually all contains this, this magical ingredient. But I just find that if I can get time for somebody to put this on for 10 minutes, even if, you know, we, that's the only time we've got, even while they're having their head, and if I can just try and get this mask on, it just brings the face right back to life. It just improves the circulation. It really helps to um, increase the skin's ability to hold its own moisture, and they just kind of come to life and look alive. So I've had that in my kit for for years I think probably 15 years since it launched another one which is really just as good is the Olay one and this contains vitamin vitamin b3 b5 and vitamin e and it's a similar situation it's a stretch mask it just puts all of the moisture back into the skin and just brings it back to life another thing the Olay mask contain is green tea which is great for boosting microcirculation which brings me on to puffiness if somebody arrives with a really puffy face then um or eyes actually it's mainly eyes that are really puffy i have done a whole film about puffy eyes so rather than just go on about it now i am going to put a link to that film underneath but we do often use the green tea ice cubes which i swear by and also muslin cloths which can be put into cold water and just held on the face to reduce puffiness and kind of calm all that down but i'll put a link to the film something that is really nice that we have in the kit is this works and this is the in transit muscle therapy and this is a roll-on for really tight shoulders and it contains um 
black cracked pepper and clove which is really good for relieving pain like the clove oil you use on toothache and it's good because you can really press hard so when we're prepping the skin we do a really good massage all around the shoulders and the neck you know if somebody walks in and they're on the phone having an argument and they're all oh this happened and my agent said this and just get this out and start really really massaging it hard and then once you've finished and you're actually doing the makeup that's when the ingredients really start to work and people say oh I can really feel that working and my shoulders feel so much better and it's it, it's just genius it's a genius product we use it ourselves as well and we've often even given it to people like the photographer's assistants on the job that have to carry so much stuff and get really stressed out so anyone who's stressed out on a job we always use that on them Another thing that I carry around with me is Scar Guard, and this is an American product which is for anyone to heal scars, so you'll use it every day. But I carry it in my kit because if someone's got a fresh ish scar on their face and I want to put makeup on it, I like to put this, a thin layer of this, which creates a barrier over the scar, and then I can put the makeup on top of it rather than just put it straight onto um, a scar which is fairly fresh. Um, and it just creates a really nice barrier and it also helps to heal the scar. I mean, it won't help with one application, but it's better than just whacking on a load of greasy foundation or something into a, a fresh scar. I think that's everything. I mean, we just like to be prepared for every eventuality. Um, I've got loads of other things I haven't even mentioned, like we do carry Pyroton and antihistamines just in case, you know, somebody turns up. I've never had to use it myself. I've never made anyone allergic, but if they turn up from another job and they've got something or if god forbid you know somebody had an allergic reaction to something that i'd used on them i'm able to give them some medication or at least help with an antihistamine and i've been on jobs where i've done um a red carpet makeup and somebody had an allergic reaction from the day before and i've been doing their makeup for the red carpet while a doctor has turned up and given them an antihistamine jab in the backside while i've been doing their makeup i mean anything can happen on these jobs so it is good to be prepared and um i hope that the products i mentioned today can be helpful to you too so thanks for watching